Amber and Tanner in the morning, and we are here with Ben Fine and Tracy Sheepos from Jackson Family Wines. Welcome, Thank you. everyone. Thanks for having us on this lovely Good morning. Evening. It's nice to have you guys back, third week in a row. We feel like we, we're finally starting to get in the swing of things. We're regulars now. <laughs> <laughs> How's, your liver, how's your liver holding up? I know, right? It's uh, basically turned into no, Pinot Noir at this point. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, looks like we have a new pairing this week. Um, I see that we have a dish over here, which I will keep my mouth sealed on. Uh, <laughs> where would you guys like us to start? Ben, you want to talk about what's important about um, this month right now for us? <laughs> yes, I do. That's a good point, but I want to make sure I say it right. <laughs> That's right. Well, so this month is Oregon Wine Month. I'm so glad that you gave me that little intro there. So, you know, we wanted to run a little uh, sort of promo to promote our Oregon wines because a lot of people don't know about our, uh, our Oregon wineries as much. And if I can just find... Sorry, Ben, I didn't mean to... That's okay. Why don't you talk... Here it is. Boom. Look at that. <laughs> okay, there it is. There it is. Okay, so it is... Uh, I've already given out wrong discounts with you guys already and I've been scolded so I wanted to make sure I got this right. So uh, you know this is Oregon Wine Month and for us it's special because we have uh, a few wineries up in Oregon. We have Pinner Ash, we have Grand Moraine, we have Willa Kenzie, and we have Zena Crown. So we want to promote these wines and uh, to help with that we're going to offer 30% off all orders of six bottles or more. What? And, yeah. Crazy. And, we, and we have a promo code and it's drink Oregon, all caps. And remember, we're talking about yourwinestore.com. So when you go to make your purchases with yourwinestore.com, you will see uh, the opportunity to put in, to fill in something for a promo code. And it is drink Oregon, all caps. And then we're still offering, I mean, outside of the, the discounts of the Oregon wines, we're still offering free delivery to um, within 60 miles of the Kennel Jackson Wine Center. So that's Sonoma and Napa counties. Yeah. Um, and we're also still offering a $15 flat rate shipping of, on cases, correct? Yeah. So there's, there's a lot happening, a lot of fun stuff. Even more reason to go to yourwinestore.com right now. Yeah, I think, I think it's actually 10%, but I said 15% and now you've said 15 So. Just no, say, $15. $15 oh, right. flat rate yeah. shipping. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if you said Ben and Tracy said it, we should just give them 15 mm, I don't know. Well, if we can either be right or wrong together. You got that Ben All and right. Tracy discount. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take the blame. It is my fault. <laughs> well, thank you. Guys. We want to, uh, yeah, we want to enjoy Oregon wines, and there's some classic Pacific Coastline dishes, some really well-known dishes out of Oregon, and Tracy, I believe you prepared one of those. I have. Friends. So today we're going to focus on some Chardonnays and Pinot from Oregon, and um, it's about to be salmon season. If you guys can believe, I mean, the past couple months, past couple weeks have like flown by, and it's we're coming up on salmon season, and or just at the beginning of it, really. Um, and salmon is one of those kind of rare foods that can go really well with Chardonnay or Pinot. It kind of depends on how you prepare it. Mm -hmm. So like I prepared a dish for you guys today that has what I call slow roasted salmon. It's cooked really slowly in a low temperature in the oven. So it's super tender. So that's a little bit more geared towards Chardonnay. If you take salmon and grill it, which is a, another really delicious way and pair it with, you know, something more like mushrooms, it's awesome with Pinot Noir. And there aren't that many foods that are that versatile, but it, all you have to do is change a few things and it can go from Chardonnay to Pinot Noir. So, um, Ben, you want to talk about the food and then Definitely. we can talk about and, the food? And yeah, yeah, I agree. Salmon's great because, um, you know, it's not, it's not like tuna. It's not the steak of the sea, right? Yeah. But it is a protein yeah. still, and it's meaty, so it can do well with Pinot Noir. But also it's, you know, it's an oily fish. It's, it's rich. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that just, it just calls for a Chardonnay. So the Chardonnay that, that you hopefully have in front of you, is Grand Moraine. Now, have you, do you guys recognize any of these labels? Have you seen these before? I don't know how often you get Oregon wines in front of you. Okay, cool. Perfect. I actually I have not. I'm from the state of Washington, so we okay. get a lot of Oregon wines up there, so I actually do recognize all three of these. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you probably enjoy Riesling here and there as well. Yep. North. Very cool. So, Grand Moraine, this is an incredible winery that I think Tracy and I are both very happy that became part of the Jackson family. Uh, yeah. A handful of years back, the winemakers Grand Moraine, and I mean, 
he's as Oregon as it gets, right? You know, he's catching his own fish. He's hitting the slopes. He's foraging for his own mushrooms. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he's, he's, he's true and true Oregon and um, very talented, especially in making wine. And I think this wine reflects it. This is one of my favorite Chardonnays. It almost has an effervescence to it because it's, it's the bright acidity, but there's also this really well intertwined sort of, you know, subtle oak flavor that goes with sort of this tangerine zest, these different fruit zests, right? I think of, it's not like super ripe fruit. It's like you just peeled it and squeezed it and that spray came out and it's so, it's really elegant. Yeah. Right? It's really elegant, nice to drink on its own, but I think once we introduce the salmon, you're going to get a whole nother mouthfeel that's really going to create sort of a mouthwatering lingering effect so why don't we dive in and i love the way you just described that the essence of the fruit after you've opened it that's so perfect i'm yeah. gonna use that i'm gonna steal that that was really good <laughs> yeah I, I started my garden for the first time last week so you know i you know I'm, i have a whole new vernacular yeah um so the the dish that you guys have this is slow roasted salmon and this salmon is from santa cruz um and yep. um what yeah right uh-huh so we gave you a little bit in one of those containers there's something called artichoke bear ghoul which is artichokes that have been slowly braised and some potatoes um just slowly braised in olive oil and white wine and then what we do is we throw in a little bit of apricot um mm -hmm. right at the end and what happens is that apricot um adds it, it adds a tiny bit of sweetness and you don't want this to be too sweet it adds a tiny bit of natural sweetness but it also does what ben said it kind of it adds this undertone right so you've got these potatoes and these artichokes which can both be very rich flavors so it adds a little bit of acid because it's not quite apricot season. I mean, we're at the beginning wow. of apricot season. So they're a tiny bit like they're right at the beginning of being ripe. They're not like super sweet, ready for pie kind of apricots. They're right at the beginning. So if you ate this apricot raw, it would be nice and tangy. Yeah. And so it adds that to the dish and creates some balance with some of the richness, um, especially because this is cooked with olive oil. And then the That's salt, so interesting. I know, right? It's one of those things, you know, we like to keep the apricot in because it's really, it gets kind of mushy and it's got this great texture. But if we, if you just took it out, it would be one of those dishes where you would eat it and you'd be like, I taste something. I don't, I don't quite know what it is. It's familiar. Yeah. I like it. But you, it, so it's one of those kind of surprise elements, a little bit of a chef trick there. Um, and like I said before, the salmon is slow roasted. So I cooked this at about 275 degrees really, really slow. So what that does is it allows the salmon to just really be like luscious and um, it's got, salmon has great fat. Um, and, and like Ben said, it's nice and it's an oily fish. And so really letting that be super tender and soft yeah. and, and have that kind of nice um, texture on your palate. And then the sauce there is called Green Goddess. This is a very classic herb, springy sauce. It's got tarragon and avocado, just very much about the season, but also a little bit tangy it's got yogurt in it so again yeah. just count you know creating some balance with some of the richness of the fish and the artichokes but just playing up all of those elements that ben just talked about with the chardonnay yeah i keep wanting to to jump around to everything but with mm. the with the artichoke dip i want to try that but i'm like mixing everything together and i feel like it's hard to describe almost what the tastes are because there's so many different flavors happening at once it's not overwhelming by any stretch of the imagination but it just it's so layered and you get every type of uh, every type of bite you want it almost seems like i love that and yeah. i love that you should definitely you know mix and match and try everything and see what really pops and what and that's how you find out what everything you is go, uh -oh. for go ahead amber yeah oh sorry it was lagging a little bit um oh. everything is really fresh yeah um and I love like the freshness of the green goddess with the salmon who like it's it's fatty um but you get that little like acidity and everything and it just pairs so well with the chardonnay um because the, the chardonnay to me is is more acidic than normal chardonnays and I'm not getting that like buttery mm -hmm. um the butteriness yeah. right. from the chardonnay like it normal do, normally do um so I think the salmon is with the green goddess specifically is a-okay yeah. delicious and that's and that's why you know when we talk about food pairings you, you scientifically can prove why they work it's not just a sort of concept to oversell you know to uh the wine yeah the food. i mean you, you said it that fattiness uh you need a rich chardonnay but that acidity that the chardonnay also has sort of cuts that fat a little bit and cleans it out and so you still yep. have sort of whiteness on your palate 
And, and, and you nailed it, Amber. There's not a lot of new oak used in this wine, right? So the idea is really showcase the flavors that you're getting from the grapes. Now, those are going to be those fruit notes and those floral notes. Once yeah. we start talking about the vanilla spices, oak, that's all from those oak and parted flavors. So I think that's another great reason why you can see doing wine and food pairing with friends is so good because it's like, like you said, you're like, I don't know what's happening, but you can talk it out and yeah. Some- Oh yeah, I think that's from the apricot. You know, it's 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 a fun experience. It is fun, and like you were saying too, Ben, this is a great time of year to really be paying attention. I know a lot of people are doing gardening and spending time in their yard, and it's a good time to be paying attention to a lot of the things that you're smelling in your garden too, especially if you're planting fresh herbs and you've got some of your fruits and vegetables starting to come up because those are really great ways to be able to you know pay attention to what you're smelling and being able to use those as your cues for when you're smelling and tasting wine as well absolutely yeah my boyfriend's always told me like go in the grocery store grab a lime or fruit or a veggie and just smell everything and then your palate will kind of expand and become more sophisticated i'm going to suggest we put that on hold for a few months yeah. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, people like Tracy, you know, we have master sommeliers that work with us. It sounds like your boyfriend is, is in the industry. That's what they do. They build their muscle memory, right? I mean, wine is so tied to smell and we know smell is so tied to memory. It's like, you might not know what tarragon is, but after smelling it a few times, yeah. you have that lost in your bank. And that's yeah. an exciting thing for someone like me who to be honest, I don't have that sophisticated of a palate, but ever since we started doing these tastings together, and a lot of people like me can do them at yourwinestore.com and have them delivered to them, mm-hmm. uh, it's exciting because I'm building almost a new hobby in a way. I'm building an experience mm. that I can yeah. share with my girlfriend where I can actually explain what I'm tasting, and it's actually kept me sane through this whole process of coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the process is yeah. fun. First you, first, you just want an excuse to drink. So you're like, oh, we'll talk about this wine. And then, but then you evolve, <laughs> and literally, you are excited to get this wine so you can see how it goes with food, so you can talk about it, so you can see how it changes and it compares. And it, it, yeah, the hobby becomes, uh, you know, yeah, it'll become one of your, your favorite ones too. Yeah. I was well, gonna, and uh, it's, yeah, uh, and like Ben was saying, you know, I know a lot of people are unfamiliar or not familiar with the fact that we have, um, we have a handful of Oregon wineries, so it's an opportunity to not only expand that hobby, as we're calling it, um, but, you know, to, yeah, try some new wines and try, try wines that, um, that are made in a very different way, a very unique way from Oregon. So, um, so I think that that's a cool part in this, too, is, you know, playing this game and, and having this, this time and these conversations with your friends and family over Zoom or, you know, your neighbors if you're meeting in the, in the cul-de-sac and, um, and making a fun kind of game out of it. Yeah. I love that. Should we, uh, yeah. should we jump into some Pinot Noirs? Yeah. Do it. Jump in. Okay. Dive in, Ben. All right. Let's put the Willikens. Why don't you have the Willikensi Pinot Noir on your left and the Penner Ash Pinot Noir on your right. And before we dive into it, perfect. Yeah, even by the color. Yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you spend you know, a few seconds smell and, smell and sip each because, you know, your advanced palates, I always love to hear your opinions. <laughs> I I think we just enjoy watching the reactions. Of I know, right? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this isn't California Pinot Noir. No. Yeah. Right? Uh, you can really taste the difference between a state. I, I feel like uh, these taste... A lot more. Oh, you're frozen, Tanner. Huh? Oh, uh, you you froze right when you were giving your you description. froze. Say that again. Oh, I'll give it again. Uh, you can really. If you have to try the wine again, we have no judgment. Okay, you don't have to tell me twice. So, I think a big observation I have is you can really taste the difference between not only Oregon and California wine, but even Sonoma County and Napa County wine. That's a big learning experience that I've had. And because this tastes completely different than most wines that I've had. This is a lot more bright. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, the, the taste, and pardon me if, if I don't have a very great vocabulary for this, but uh, the taste is a little bit more present, a little bit more forthright. Okay. And uh, I adore it. I love it. 
Love it. Okay. What about you, Amber? What do you think? Does oh, the Willa Kenzie Pinot Noir have pomegranates in it? It's either pomegranate uh, or black. I would say the, that Willa Kenzie has what we would call high toned fruit, high toned red fruit, which would be things red like fruit. cranberry, things like pomegranate. So mm -hmm. okay. we're on the white, right track. And just to talk about Oregon Pinot Noirs. Uh, a lot of people will say they're more Burgundian, right? Sort of like Pinot Noir from Burgundy. Oregon wines are truly Oregonian, all right? They do tote the line between New World or, or what, let's just say California Pinot Noir and Old World Burgundian Pinot Noir because there's probably a little more fruit present than you'd find yeah. in Burgundy, but it's lean fruit. It's not that luscious, juicy, you know, Russian River coating your mouth fruit. Yeah. It's, it's sort of lean and mean. It's yeah. there and then it's gone. But when it's there, it's really going back to what you said, Tanner. It's fresh and it's wild. These are these are words we use to describe the wine, right? It's there. It's ever present. It's saying, hey, it's just not super lingering, but it's really yeah. pretty. Especially that Willa Kenzie to me is a little more high toned fruit. If we go to um, Penarash, I haven't. I've had this wine once, and it was uh, this specific one, the Eola Amity. I don't know if you've ever had it, Tracy. I actually haven't, and I was, I'm going to get a bottle today because I'm super interested in it. I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity of having this wine yet. Now, Eola is another subregion of uh, Willamette. So you have Eola with the Penarash, and you have Yamhill Carlton. So just think of this as like Green Valley, Russian River Valley, different parts of Sonoma County. And Eola, to me, is really where you start thinking about Old World, because I tend to get really sort of dirty in a really great way. You get sort of medicinal almost, and it's just, you're really not, it's not just fruit all over the place. Now, this yeah. fruit is darker fruit, right? So um, just to talk about the wineries, Willa Kenzie was the first live certified winery in Oregon. Live is the wow. sustainability certification. So they've been doing things right since day one. The mm -hmm. winemaker uh, has scored the highest points ever for any winery at um, Oregon. He used to be at Domaine Serene. Eric, he's a great incredible humble guy who makes incredible wines and you can see his wines are really they have finesse to it they have floral notes to it the the fruit is high toned but there's a lot of it so it's light fruit that's heavy right i don't know if that makes sense right absolutely Maybe but, like strawberry or i don't know it's like strawberry but it's like yo i'm here for a while i'm strawberry <laughs> <laughs> yo. Yeah. Compared to Panarash, where maybe it's not the most lingering fruit, but it's dark fruit, it's black cherry, it's a little darker. I think it, I think that wine's even darker than the Willa Kenzie Pinot. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like this is going to be a weird thing to say, but stay with me. I feel like this wine, compared to California wines, this wine's got a little bit of street cred. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, like, like a cowboy, like... <laughs> I feel like a cowboy has, like, lassoed me and, like... Like they're running up to me like while I'm tasting it. And then they go, oh shoot, it's the wrong person. And then drops it. Then the taste goes out of nowhere. <laughs> we we missed the beginning, but we heard all we needed. Yeah. To well, okay. and it was perfect because it was almost like you were gonna like it, like maybe there was something that was gonna come out that maybe shouldn't be said if so it was the almost. perfect like wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that was awesome. that was no, you know what I love is the fact that you guys just had the opportunity to taste those side by side, yeah. which yeah. I think is, you know, right. Like it's common for us to open up a bottle of wine and, um, at a time, I should say one bottle of wine at a time. Like most people will choose a bottle of wine. They'll drink that. And then if they go to drink more, they'll drink, they'll open up a second bottle of wine and drink that. But Talk about a fun game to choose two bottles of wine and to taste them side by side. And what's really fun is if you try, if you try like an Oregon Pinot Noir next to a Cal Pinot Noir and you get the opportunity to really tell the differences in the wines, yeah. both delicious. Like, you know, if you have a, if you have a La Crema Pinot Noir, now La Crema does have um, some, you know, source some fruit from Oregon, but if you focus on a Sonoma County uh, Pinot Noir from La Crema and then you get like a Penarash Pinot Noir, you will taste the difference and the yeah. style of the way that the wine is made. And it's so cool. Like talk about a fun game. We're talking about doing this with food. We've talked about doing this with all sorts of snacks, but talk about a fun game to do with people is to get a bit of a lineup and really taste them side by side. But, um, and then you would go deep and even like smell them. You would like really start off like don't even before you taste, really smell the differences. And yeah. it is so cool when yeah. you have the opportunity to do that. 
You know what I want to do with you guys so bad? I want to get a map of the United States, find where all the major winery, wineries are in the United States, and see. You keep on point. freezing, and so we're we're missing all the good stuff. Uh, okay, am I better now? Our Wi-Fi here. Okay, okay. you want to get what? You want to get what I think you said is I want to get a map of the United States and I want to run an RV and we're going to drive across the country yeah. and try all the great wine and food that there there is. I mean, <laughs> is that's that true. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but what I want to do is World get tour. a map, get wines from all across the country, and see if you can pinpoint which wine oh. goes to what state. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I couldn't do it. I would love to. I couldn't do it. I would love ben to. Ben can do it. He's the master sommelier, I right? think Ben would be better at it than me. I mean, there's just every state, every state is making wine right now. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, there's been some states I've avoided. But, um, but hey, I don't knock it till I try it. So that would be fun. Yeah. I think what would be cool more is a global, right? So you have a Pinot yeah. from Australia, a Pinot from New Zealand, a Pinot from Chile, a Pinot from California, a Pinot from Oregon, a Pinot from Italy. Italy, exactly. A Pinot from France. That could give us a couple Love of that. hours, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what this next is. next week, right? Well <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Why not? Were you, were you able to try the Pinot with the salmon? Yes, I have been eating a lot over here. No shame in my game. No. But it's this delicious. Is the I think <laughs> I think I prefer the Kinner Ash with the salmon. Mm -hmm. Um I agree. Could you explain maybe why I prefer it with the salmon? This one specifically. I mean, you know, I I I mean, it's all about personal taste. The fact that you yeah. guys both like it, but um, you know, maybe because of that that fatty that oiliness is is it bringing something out for you in the wine that's that you're enjoying? Is it making the fruit pop? Is it adding something to your palate that um, you know that that's in, enticing? Like I said, that oils on the fish can be really a nice kind of um feeling on your palate especially the way this fish is cooked for me so. i feel like the ash has the the fruit is a little bit less in your uh, palate than the mm. willa kenzie is so i feel like it's it's almost a little bit you have less going on in your mouth it's a little bit mm. of a smoother ride but if you want a bunch of uh of uh, taste to pop up in your mouth like the fourth of july you do the willa kenzie with this. <laughs> yeah. the so july. maybe the willa kenzie would be that way where it would be like grilled salmon and maybe there's some yeah. cool seasoning on it and then maybe there's like a salad with pickled cherries or you know something like that yeah. so again like some bigger like you said there's a little bit more uh, a bigger fruit flavor going on in the wine so to match that that um to really hold up the same flavors yeah yeah, you know, um, okay. when we think of when we think of wine, we think of the red wines being heavier than the white wines. But really, we call Pinot Noir a, a white grape with a red dress. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, Chardonnays. I don't know the alcohols on these, but I'm sure they're all very similar in alcohol. And the truth is, like you said, because that Willa Kenzie, it's more floral, finesse, high fruit tone. The salmon might be dominating it a little bit, where the Pinot mm -hmm. is more earthy, dark. You know, they're and you yeah. know. Made this dish for Chardonnay, but she could make salmon in many ways where it would ask more for a Pinot Noir. But but that's what's fun, right? I mean, we started a few weeks ago, and it's like, what do we have in front of us? And now you guys are able to identify not just what variety, but where it's from, and you're seeing yeah. the differences. And so yeah, that's what's really cool. Even with just one type of wine, even with Pinot Noir, you're going to have different foods and different preparations that work with work with different ones, right? So for sure, I like the salmon more with the Pinot but there's probably maybe like a, you know, a different dish, you know, like a salad with, with fruit and goat cheese and yeah. almonds you might prefer with the Willa Kenzie. Who knows? Yeah. How about the but that's a cool thing too. So when you order from your wine store, oh, go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead. I was saying, you know, when you order from your wine store, I know we talked about this a little bit last week, but that we're sending out recipes with the deliveries. And because again, we want people to, um, to have, to, you know, to have something, some, some inspiration on some of the foods to make with the wines that they're ordering. So that's just one more, one more bonus of ordering from your wine store. You can choose, you can do a mixed case of um, the wines that you see. You, there's lots of great discounts, especially on, on Oregon wines this month. Yeah. And there's recipes and we still are doing, you know, cheese and uh, charcuterie options for people that live locally in Sonoma and Napa counties. So 
we're kind of a one-stop shop. <laughs> yeah, everything you need, truly. And this is the really? first time I've had slow-roasted salmon before. And I no, thought I was I, a salmon connoisseur, but I have been proven wrong today. And I love it. <laughs> good, good, good. We're, we're glad. You mentioned that. <laughs> you mentioned the char charcuterie uh, board. And that's like what my girlfriends are missing the most right now. They're missing going and eating charcuterie and cheese and drinking wine. And we want to do that yes. so bad. It's the number one thing we miss because that's what you do here in Sonoma County, you know? And uh, I think this is just a great way for us to continue to do that, to connect by, you know, going to yourwinestore.com, getting a lot of the same wines, getting on Zoom, and just connecting again. So I think it's a, like a fantastic thing that you guys are doing. And just, again, I keep saying connecting, but we're connecting the community again and finding creative ways and your wine store is a great way to do that. Yeah. I've heard some people doing some really fun things. I've heard of neighbors doing this where they're all ordering different, uh, you know, some of the same wines and then they're all getting cheese and charcuterie platters. And then they're all kind of sitting in their neighborhood together, enjoying it. I've heard people that, you know, lots of birthdays and anniversaries happening right now, right? Yeah. All those things still happen no matter what. My husband's birthday was yesterday. Happy I mean, birthday. 17, it's happening. Anniversaries. And so what a great way also to, you know, be able to celebrate those occasions by having someone drop wine and cheese and charcuterie at your door. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's a good birthday present. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. I, I, I walked through um, the neighborhood where I grew up I, uh, with my dad, and I brought a bottle of wine, and our, our friends, we went, you know, everyone was howling because it was 8 p.m., so all these kids are like howling. We're walking through the neighborhood, and Love they were waiting. They had chairs ready for us. They had their own glass, so, you know, we're staying safe, and so we pour it for them at a distance, and... Um, it's just special. And like you said, if you can order the charcuterie now, if you can order the wines, go pick it up or have it brought to here, brought to your home. And if you can create just a little comfort Zen den, whether it's outside on the couch and you have your, your friends on Zoom or FaceTime and you have everything you need, you know, the comfort is, is what makes us feel good right now. And right. yeah, that's just all we're trying to help with. Well, that's and we're all, hungry. we're all hungry and thirsty. Yeah. Very thirsty. Wait, all the time. Yes. Uh, ben, ben and Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us uh, one more time about the deal with the Oregon wines and yourwinestore.com? Yes. So yourwinestore.com. We are offering $15 flat rate. We will ship you wine, wine uh, wherever you are across the United States. If you're local in Napa or Sonoma, we will uh, ship it to you for free. If you want to get on the road, put the window down, come drive to our Kendall Jackson Wine Estate and Gardens where you can pick up the wine. Just make sure you go to yourwinestore.com first and order it. And right now, because it's Oregon Wine Month, we are offering a 30% off all, off all orders of six bottles or more. You just need to put all caps, drink Oregon, with no space in between, drink Oregon in the promo code. And also, you know, we are part of the Chardonnay. We've started the Chardonnay revolution. We are leading the fight to bring the uh, white wine emoji. We are all about Chardonnay. <laughs> you know, National Chardonnay Day is in two weeks, and we'll be going live May 18th all week with a lot of promos of Chardonnays. And I have a feeling we all will be drinking some more Chardonnay together. Woo! Yeah, get your Chardonnay. <laughs> well, guys, well, guys I, I can't wait to meet you and do this all in person one day. Hopefully, it'll be sooner rather than later. And we just want to say thank you so much for everything. We've enjoyed this thoroughly. Thank you guys again for having us. Yeah, don't forget to go to yourwinestore.com. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Have a great day. Thanks, you guys too. Take care. Bye.